Professor Drinking Buddy here to define every term in your Drinking Buddy's whiskey dictionary. I'm your drinking buddy. <sighs> Next up, we have moonshine. What's the difference between moonshine and bourbon? Well, moonshine can be made out of anything because it's not a legal product. Uh, you can make whatever you want into moonshine, whereas bourbon has to be at least 51% corn and other grains. And moonshine also isn't aged generally. It is usually a white lightning, a, a new make product. Um, and so therefore it, it's not, it's, it might be bourbon's like second cousin, but it's not really that close to bourbon. Next up, we have non-age statement. So what do I mean when people say NAS, non-age statement? Well, that would be a bottle that... That would be a bottle that doesn't tell you how old it is. So that might be something like this um, 1792 foolproof here. Uh, but we also have next to it here, we have 1792 age 12 years. So this has an age statement on it. So this is not a NAS, but this is an NAS. And why would a distillery choose not to put the, the age statement on the bottle? Well, because for bourbon, it has to be made, it has to be aged for at least four years unless they say that on the bottle. So if they aged it for less than four years, they're gonna have to put that age statement on the bottle. And uh, second, it's most, most uh, distilleries are gonna be using a blend to create their product. So something like Wild Turkey 101 is gonna be a blend between six year, seven year and eight year old bourbons and they blend it together to give the same consistent product each and every time. If they were using, you know, if it was Wild Turkey 8, you know, that year's Wild Turkey 101 might taste different from the year before because they're not blending it to get that same consistent flavor every time. There's some other examples too, like something like this. This barrel bourbon has this six year age statement on it, but that just means the youngest whiskey in this bottle is six years old. There's much older whiskey in here. But since the youngest whiskey in the bottle is six years, they have to put six years on the label. Next up, we have NDP. What does that mean? Non-distiller producer. What's a non-distiller producer? Well, that would be something like this bullet here. And if you look at the back, it says bottled by the bullet distilling company. Well, who made it? I don't know. We just know that it's Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. So they made it somewhere in Kentucky, but we don't know who made it. And this can be frustrating when you're paying a lot for a bottle. This is what I would consider a pretty budget bourbon for being 10 years old. Also, another problem with NDSs is, is you often don't get an age statement. At least this bullet is giving me a 10 year age statement, which is not something you see very often on bourbon. Next up, we got new make slash white lightning. What is that? Well, you can buy something like this, which is White Dog Mash 1 from Buffalo Trace. This is gonna be their Mash 1 that will end up becoming things like Stag Jr., E.H. Taylor, Eagle Rare, and uh, they just didn't age it. It didn't go into a ch new charred oak barrel. It uh, just stayed in its original clear, uh, right out of the still product. And what does that mean? Well, it kind of just tastes like corn. And it smells like corn. A lot like corn pops the cereal, so it's kind of like a, a like a like a corn grain smell. Um, but yeah, I would say it, it tastes a lot like corn pops the cereal. Uh, it's pretty good in cocktails too. I, I would actually recommend trying it out. So you know what bourbon tastes like before it goes into one of those new charred oak barrels. Next up, we have single barrel S I B. Now, why is the abbreviation for single barrel SIB? Well, because it doesn't want to be confused with small batch, which we'll get to in a second here. But single barrel SIB, what does that mean? Well, this 1792 was only 17, uh, was only from one barrel. Only one barrel of whiskey went into the production of this bottle. Um, you know, they can, any other product can have any number of whiskeys from any number of barrels being blended together to make the same consistent product, but this one is from one single barrel. And these can be pretty fun because you get a wide range of variety of, from, of flavors from them. And I'll give you a really good example. I know this is a rye, not a bourbon, but hey, they, the rye and bourbon cross over quite a bit. Uh, the first bottle of this Michter's rye that I tasted, I thought was really bad. I didn't like it. I thought Michter's rye was just bad. And then I tried this one, uh, I gave it another chance and boy, is this stuff really good. Um, this is seriously 
one of the best ryes I've ever tasted. It might be the best whiskey I've ever tasted below 88 proof. It's sitting at 84.8 .8 proof and it's got so much flavor. It's, it's chocolate and caramel and peanuts. It's like a Snickers candy bar. I love this stuff. And I probably would have never tried it again had I not given a single barrel another chance because I know they can vary from batch to batch. They shouldn't vary that dramatically, but they can sometimes. Next up, we have small batch. And what does a small batch mean? Well, a small batch is going to be a batch of whiskey, usually between 10 and 50 barrels that they blend down to make a consistent product. So something like 1792 small batch or E.H. Taylor small batch. It's usually defined as 10 to 50 barrels, but there is no actual regulation on the term small batch. So technically they could probably slap that on almost any bourbon. Uh, but the idea behind it is you uh, don't have too much fussing and too much blending going on. You know, you know you're gonna get a consistent product without too much fussery being done with it. Um, to me, I don't see too much of a difference between a standard, between a small batch and a standard offering for the most part. Uh, but, you know, some people just like that term, you know, 1792 likes to label their, their standard offering as small batch. Um, more power to them, I guess. Uh, they, they don't, they, that, unfortunately, that, that term doesn't necessarily have any real meaning. Uh, but its abbreviation is SB. Next up, we're going to talk about store picks. What is a store pick? Well, a store pick is when the company went and let's grab this one again. Why not? The company uh, that's selling it to you, this in this case, Total Wine, went to uh, the distillery or maybe they just had some samples sent to them and they got to uh, uh, taste those samples and make a selection of which barrel they liked the best. And so everything in this barrel came from that barrel they selected, and same here. Um, they can be really fun. I, I highly recommend store picks, especially if they're not very much more expensive than the standard offering. Sometimes they are kind of dramatically more, unfortunately. But if you ever see any Buffalo Trace store picks specifically, I would highly recommend picking them up. Any of their, dis any of their uh, products, pick it up. And then also these Knob Creek single barrel selects are also really solid. I would recommend those as well. And sometimes they can carry a pretty old age. They can be up to 15 years old in their single barrel selects. All right, drinking buddies. So the last definition on our dictionary is going to be toasted. And you'll often see toasted barrel on a product. And what does that actually mean? Well, the bourbon is done in one single bar one barrel charred and uh, used one time. When that bourbon is done, they take it out of that barrel and put it in a brand new charred oak barrel that is not just a regular charred oak barrel, it is really toasted. They give it a really heavy char. And a lot of the young bourbon sweetness, I believe comes from, um, you know, is accentuated by the early time sitting in the, the new charred oak barrel. And so you're getting that again. Uh, so often these toasted barrel offerings are really sweet and desserty, things like 1910 from Old Forester, things like Woodford Double Oak, uh, Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel. These are really sweet, nice bourbons that taste a lot older and a lot more complex than they actually are because they got put in a second toasted barrel. Uh, my favorite bourbon from last year, my favorite release from last year was the Master's Keep One, which is a 101 proof wild turkey product uh, that has been finished in a toasted barrel. And boy, is it tasty. Um, well, drinking buddies, that was my glossary of terms from your drinking buddies, Bourbon Dictionary. If you have any uh, uh, topics that I didn't cover, please put them in the comments and I will try to explain over there. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like button. If you stayed this long, it's the least you could do. And we'll see you on the next one.